Okay, so for those of you who have followed my channel, um, which is Rory Townsend TV, you'd notice I do a lot of videos on, you know, tutorials on design software and so forth, specifically the Affinity Range and a couple of other stuff. But in between, I usually have some other things that I do, things that I discover with my own life, uh, stuff I use that helps me, and I share it here. So I've been speaking about hydrogen peroxide, how I sort of did the 3% dilution for nebulizer, humidifiers, and that sort of stuff. And recently I did one where I use 3% food grade hydrogen peroxide, put it in an eardropper, or just a dropper. It's not called an eardropper, it's just a dropper. And I put about 10 drops into the ear. Just make sure, if you watch that video, it will tell you. Make sure you don't have any medical issues like perforated eardrums and so forth. Uh, I put it for the earwax. You'll hear like crazy bubbling and then clear it out after the bubbling stops or 6 to 10 minutes. Um, yeah, so that's what I did recently. Um, I also use it just personally for, this is 3% also, I spray it onto any cold source, which are viruses, herpes virus. So you can spray it on there. 3% food grade, and I, that seems to help in my case. Now, I'm not giving you this advice as a medical doctor. Um, you still go get your medical advice. This is just anecdotal. Um, I am, by qualification, a dental surgeon, so maybe the herpes thing is something that we could advise with. Um, because I actually was just recalling that uh, we use iron peroxide to irrigate uh, root canals. So if we do a root canal and there's any infection there, we often would use a syringe, put in hydrogen peroxide in there and then squeeze it in there, suction out, of course, so it doesn't get into the mouth. And then we used to sort of irrigate the root canal that had infection in it. And that helps with the disinfection there. So in dental purposes, they, you know, we, we do use that kind of stuff. But this is not about that particular side of it. I want to give you the little experience that I had. And maybe it's a bit of warning that if you discover this, a solution for you. So I've got water tanks here. I've got two 5,000 liter water tanks. And um, I needed a 7% food grade hydrogen peroxide a mixture so that I can add to my water tanks. So it would be something like, um, maybe I'll put in the description, these guys that I, they gave me the dilutions. It's something like 200 mils of 7% hydrogen peroxide per 1,000 liters. Now, because I have a 5,000 liter, two 5,000 liter tanks, uh, per 5,000 liter, I have to put a liter of uh, food grade 7% um, hydrogen peroxide per 5,000 liter. So I was looking at whether I should order 7%. It's not that easy to get it from the supplier, the chemical suppliers but they had higher concentrations. And then that's what I did is I ordered 35% food grade. Now it's important to have food grade, okay? Because it's got to be pure that when it says food grade, it's, it's probably about the safest for the purpose that I'm speaking about. So I ordered 35% and the intention there is to dilute it from 35% down to 7%. And in my estimations, um, it's about one liter of the 35% to four liters of water. That will get the proportion down and make it 7% hydrogen peroxide. I'll try and leave a link at the bottom to uh, the site where they do explain that or just give you a description. If you want to take 35% down to, you know, 3%, how many times it's going to be diluted, etc. But um, I got the substance, I got the 35%. I've always ordered 3.5% food grade. So, you know, you could take it out and it falls on your hand, no problem. When it was delivered to me, the courier company said that they, they had a bit of the, some little bit leaked out. So the, the box that it came in had, it was sort of damp. I said, oh, no problem, because I'm going to be diluting it in any case, like, you know, massively. Um, so I took the thing out and... I put it there and I walked inside into the house. This was outside. I had the 35% the there. And fortunately, not more than just a little bit touched on my finger. Because as I walked inside, I started feeling my finger tingling yet. It was burning. I looked at it and now it's, it's normal. But I looked at it and it started, you know, uh, like if you're in water for a long while, it turns white. But this was like really turning white and it started burning like stinging. And I started panicking. I thought like, 
you know, I know hydrogen peroxide, high concentrations are dangerous, but you know, on the container it says don't swallow. So yes, we won't swallow, but for touching, was it that dangerous or, if, you know, um, so I went and I just quickly looked up a solution and there they mentioned immediately wash it off uh, water and soap just make sure you get all the substance off with soap and then keep it in water um, for five ten minutes if you can so what i did is i've got a container so i've got a container like this and i just okay oops this is any container you can use a cup anything but i put this water in here and this was the finger so i just kept it in the water so i like kind of rubbed it rubbed it quite hard like this there was no skin peeling off but it was white it's like white white turned white very quickly as i say i'm extremely blessed and fortunate that you know i didn't pour the things and it ran on my hand like this because it would have been a nightmare um, so i had my finger kept washing it off with soap and then i use a biodegradable soap non-toxic and all that so just make sure you have decent soap put it, the water was in here and kept it in the water all the time and kind of just rubbed it against the side, walked around for about 10 minutes like this and occasionally kind of rubbed it on there. And it's perfect now. So uh, my assessment is that what that does is it was diluting the, the concentration that was sticking on the skin. And fortunately, it didn't go like into the skin and cause blisters or anything. It was just burning on the edge of the skin. So I periodically would rub it. I was kind of anticipating that as I rub, the skin would come off, but none of that sorts. It was just irrit highly irritating. And yet again, I'm saying I was quite blessed that I didn't spill a whole lot on. And I thought I'd make this video so that for anybody who is dealing with 35%, you know, put on gloves. I don't know its, it's effect on gloves, or so, but it's highly concentrated. So... Put on gloves and just make sure you don't spill it anywhere or if it's spilled on the container, don't touch on it. Just make sure that part is there. Um, and then, of course, now for usage in the water tanks, I would use one liter of the 35% uh, into a container. And then I would add to that the dilutions that I need to make with that. So one liter plus four liters of water would give me a dilution of 7%, okay? And like I said in the description, you can see that and just verify what I'm saying, those dilutions. Um, so yeah, that was it. So if you are going to be ordering 35% or even, you know, anything stronger than like 3% or so, just be cautious when you're having physical contact with, with it. 3% uh, is quite low, so I mean 3%, it falls on you that does nothing i mean i'm like i said i put it into my ear but the 35 percent is you know and higher would also be very dangerous so the solution is if if it spills onto you and you start getting burning just wash off with soap keep it in water under water and keep i would say keep rubbing hopefully your skin don't come off mine didn't just keep rubbing because all you're trying to do is to use the water to keep diluting that surface amount of hydrogen peroxide and some people might go like, oh, but that is dangerous. Maybe what would happen if, if you put that inside your body or your ear, like you're saying you're using it. Here again, any chemical is, if you take any chemical and you take the concentrated form and you put it on your body or inside your body, you can kill yourself. So everything that is effective in life in too higher concentrations could be dangerous. So just make sure if there's anything that's going to be breathe, breathed in, uh, that's going to be food grade and 3.5% and less. For my drinking water, that's going 1 liter of 7% dilution going into 5,000 liters of water. So that will create a dilution and that's basically to kill off fungi, bacteria, viruses in the water. And then I have a filtration system after that also. So yeah, for those who have maybe had some or are going to be ordering 3.5% or had the experience, uh, really that's a solution for me. I'm so happy. So this is, if you look here, my finger was totally white here. I don't want to make the video showing you <laughs> what it looked like while it was burning. Uh, but yeah, it's it looks normal now. There's now no blistering or anything there. So wash off with soap into water. Might look funny walking around with a cup or something like this, but keep it submersed and keep sort of rubbing against the side just so that you can dilute all of that. Hydrogen peroxide at the edge of your finger or wherever you've spilt it. 
and please avoid the eyes when you've got this high concentration and keep it away from children okay so what do they say too much of a good thing can be bad but in this case hydrogen peroxide incredible substance that is exceptionally helpful um, yeah, don't don't make don't make it bad by the fact that it can cause problems in high concentrations don't villainize it see it for the value that there is in it okay so hopefully that helps have a blessed day and as we enter into 2023 i hope that you be blessed you have a lot of shalom in your life yes and have a fantastic fantastic 2023 be blessed shalom